A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we're back with another keynote for the day. And today we have with us a very young and uh, dynamic entrepreneur, Tarun Nazare, who is the CEO and co-founder of NeoCred, which is a neo bank that provides infrastructure for open banking APIs. And Tarun will be sharing some key insights on how any company can become a fintech company. That's quite an interesting topic, Tarun. And uh, we'll all wait to hear from you on uh, how will we come to become a fintech company. Over to you, Tarun. Thank you, Punita. So over here uh, at NeoCred, uh, so uh, we are you know, uh, building a stack which creates the acquiring side as well as the issuance side uh, of the payment uh, ecosystem over here. So what we do uh, in NeoCred is with the stack, we turn any company uh, in any sector into a fintech. So today, I, you know, I'm going to talk about uh, how you can turn your company into a fintech itself with giving a few examples. Like in the last decade, we have seen interesting collaborations between uh, payment service providers and players in various sectors offering financial services to their end users itself. Some of the examples are like a food delivery company facilitating uh, the payment acceptance to a, through a payment gateway, a ride sharing company facilitating QR enabled payments and prepaid wallets, petroleum companies offering the prepaid cards to avail fuel at a discounted price, phone manufacturing companies offering credit cards uh, to their users, and retailers acting as a micro ATM uh, for cash withdrawal facilities over there. Most uh, businesses are seeking new ways to monetize uh, from their users and offer financial services. And uh, with this increasing the uh, LTV of their product, offering financial services to their users has been one of the ways to be uh, able to understand their users' spend patterns in a, a much larger uh, through the data uh, consumable. And in terms of personalizing their journey using the data to improve their entire user experience over there. Now, these banking solutions, uh, uh, you know, provide the company in a new way to monetize through loans and credit that are being facilitated. And financial services also enable businesses to collect data, which helps in understanding user preferences over here. Now, fintechs have gone all the way. Uh, you know, in uh, facilitating a customized banking solutions, which suits that respective industry needs and takes care of the compliance uh, as well. Uh, these industry giants are, you know, observing and implementing this trend. To name a few, there are like the Apple credit card, Samsung Pay, uh, Amazon Pay, Flipkart credit card. They are actually not in the, the uh, you know, core domain of uh, payment as a solution that are offering, but since their users uh, facilitate that and require such a, uh, you know, a next level of product upgradation into their own existing app, and they plug and play with a fintech and provide these solutions over there. Usually companies uh, like these think that uh, uh, they need to build the whole banking infrastructure to facilitate that, but all these uh, wheel inventing is already done by a few of the fintechs in the market, which acts as an infrastructure neobank uh, providers, which facilitates a financial services into the respective apps in a plug and play system itself. That means in a plug and play model, which is easier and companies are able to readily add banking products in their current application within a matter of days itself. Fintechs have been increasingly prevalent uh, in terms of more companies offering integrated financial products into uh, their uh, application and offering a best rates with their partner banks itself over here. And um, to give a few examples, like how uh, Apple just launched their credit card. Not that long ago, Apple was just a software company facilitating uh, you know, uh, software on their mobile phones and other devices as well. Now it has provided credit card to their premium members with their existing product line itself. Take Uber, for example, over there. Like it's a ride sharing company. Like if you are a driver and you want to join the Uber network, uh, one thing is you uh, you know register yourself as a driver, and then if you do not have that respective vehicle, then Uber facilitates that uh, vehicle loan on behalf of you, hence acting as a bank 
over here. Now for the driver over here, he gets his, uh, you know, uh, uh, he gets offered a job with Uber as well as the respective tools also are uh, offered by Uber for him. This increases the stickiness with the company and that brand loyalty uh, that is being created uh, by other sectors in the market itself. Now, what is happening uh, over here at, at NeoCred? NeoCred, we have partnered uh, with multiple banks to offer this services as a banking uh, in a box itself. Over here, we act as a fintech enabler. Now, which means that we have, you know, we have created an Omni stack, which uh, understands clients' user base and, uh, uh, you know, curate the product offerings for their uh, client uh, clients' users itself. And this is all done with a single API and a platform framework itself. Now, this being said. When companies are offering uh, financial services uh, in their existing platform, they are creating a new banking uh, uh, facility inside their app itself. This stack enables any company to offer financial solutions to their users, which helps them monetize through itself. Some of the solutions uh, such as a prepaid card, a credit card, a soft pass, or even a bank account are is offered in a white label solution to the partners who want to target the audience in their respective tier one, tier two, tier three cities itself. Now, uh, payments has you know been part of the equation uh, for a long time by pro and now providing a banking solution which is easier and in a more flexible manner. Companies start offering their own financial services. To their own respective market itself. We have seen Cred who is offering financial services only to the premium 1% of that population itself. We have seen, uh, you know, a pay nearby facilitating soft costs to their existing merchant base itself. Now, this enables the ecosystem to become a complete open banking platform, which democratizes the way people bank. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, this. Thank you, Tarun. That was quite interesting. But uh, I have a question here. Uh, I mean, uh, you have been making a lot of collaborations in the banking domain. So I just want to know how does that work out in the current scenario? So more or less, uh, you know, when we collaborate with a bank, uh, we get a lot of uh, APIs and we get a lot of process flow that uh, we put across, uh, uh, you know, on our Omni stack itself. A few of the APIs has to be, you know, customized to segment and uh, facilitate in that respective domain itself. Given an example, uh, uh, like, you know, a Shell Petroleum, when they offer prepaid cards to their user, they offer it in a way that it that incentivizes the users while fueling it. It over there. Now, there are tweaks that happens uh, in the banking platform in partnership with a bank and its core banking uh, solution provider itself. In terms of changing the way that a, a financial product is offered in that respective segment itself. Okay, okay, interesting. Well, I also have uh, some audience questions coming here, and uh, they're asking, I mean, uh, is there any way fintech startups can tap into the population that still doesn't have smartphones? There are very interesting uh, use cases that uh, even while uh, you know you need to avail few things right now in an online mode, we are, with NPCI and the government initiative, they are coming with in offline mode as well for the basic uh, phone. Uh, that are used by the population itself. So it's an SMS based transaction that is happening uh, uh, through a basic uh, phone itself. So that, yes, uh, FinTech, uh, we are enabling those uh, features as well. Okay, quite interesting. So what's the current user base like, uh, if you could share with us for your platform? So over here, we cater to more than uh, 10 million uh, user bases across various platforms. So one being on the prepaid segment in facilitating a prepaid card uh, to those target audience into the uh, tier markets. One is on the credit uh, as an instrument. So we tie up with the NBFC banks uh, to facilitate to entrepreneurs as well as on the retail uh, segment itself. And we have soft pause 
wherein we white label it and facilitate it to the uh, companies who already have a merchant uh, base with them. Okay, okay. And uh, the current uh, customer base would be majority of, uh, I mean, the, the banking domain? Yeah, more or less, uh, see, on the uh, acquiring side, uh, it is about a 3 million wherein uh, through merchants, we, first, we acquire uh, merchants itself, not in the direct manner but through partnering with companies who already have uh, a merchant basis so indirect acquisition happens uh, in that vertical and on the card issuance side we have about uh, 7 million uh, customers that we facilitate prepaid cards for this can be multiple use cases like a gift card incentive card a wellness card or a retailer card or a student neobank uh, itself okay okay the student card is i mean is it for teenagers or is it for college yeah. grads? So, uh, so the partner that we have facilitates uh, student, uh, you know, the student uh, payment card to below 18 as well as the above 18 as well for, in terms of schools and colleges as well. Now we have, you know, uh, went into deep level integration with them that if a parent, does, uh, you know, wants to take care of the health, like suppose uh, they, they don't want their... Uh, you know, the child to eat a samosa. Now, if he goes and taps and the, the samosa is part of the bill, then it doesn't go through the payment itself. So mm -hmm. like that, that's the kind of, uh, you know, keeping the health of the parent, uh, the health of the student, uh, as well as a check uh, for the parent. Okay, okay. So but how are you promoting it uh, among the student community? So uh, we don't do it on a direct basis. So we have a few partners who are already uh, acting as a friend-facing application for the students, uh, schools, and colleges, where not only on the card basis that they are facilitating these uh, banking services, but also on the salaries that are given to teachers they are in terms of attendance. So instead of a manual attendance, wherein you say, Ki, yes, ma'am, and everything, rather you just tap on the uh, door of the... Uh, you know, classroom uh, that you take the card and you tap it and then the attendance is recorded over there. So most of us, we have, you know, dealt with our friends giving attendance for us like that. But here in, the, in case we have solved those attendance issues. Okay, that's quite interesting. So, but there are, are there, I mean, more focus toward metro cities or uh, you have uh, users from tier two and other towns as well? The best part is uh, the, uh, you know, the company that we have tied up with, they have, they have more concentration in tier two, three, four cities like that as compared to tier one uh, cities itself. The real problems in terms of uh, educating a customer, making sure that the product is being used uh, in those markets where there are larger population as compared to the tier one cities itself. So if the tier two is able to use your product in a well efficient manner, then the tier one, uh, it's just okay interesting and going forward i mean do you think this is something which can be taken global definitely we are so uh, you know the partners uh, that we have uh, uh, in terms of the processors and the bank itself uh, we can facilitate this use case globally uh, then you know uh, india being a validation market once we validate the product uh, throughput uh, over here itself it can just be you know uh, multiplied and uh, white labeled in other markets as well. Quite interesting. I must say it looks like a revolutionary product. Definitely. So we being uh, on the both side of the tables in terms of issuancing of the card and in terms of where the card is being tapped on the acquiring side as well. So we get to see the both side of the table in terms of how the ecosystem is working. And then we upgrade our product uh, accordingly to those uh, ecosystem requirements. OK, OK, great. So with this, Tarun, uh, I would like to thank you for taking time.